I'm at the range today to test out the scope, lent to me by a buddy from the rifle club. This Pinty is an unusual combination of a 4-12 power scope, green laser illuminator, and multi-reticle reflex sight, all combined into a single optics chassis package. And this is what came to mind when I first saw it. Having so many accessories strapped onto the exterior of a scope just seemed like such a parody of the overindulgent tactical aesthetic. And some PewTubers I know have reviewed Pinty scopes and have walked away with mm, somewhat negative impressions of them. But hey, let's unbox this thing and see what we got ourselves into. What do we have here? We have a laser. All right. We have a laser. Interesting. We have uh, some 2032 batteries, a CR123A lithium battery, uh, and instruction manuals, Allen keys, and a microfiber cleaning cloth. Insert. Are you happy? That is our manu manufacturer. Um, Warranty, social media stuff. This looks like the clamp, a Picatinny clamp for your laser emitter. You've got lens covers, bra type, older, old school bra type, uh, but they are see-through with uh, uh, yellow, a uh, yellow tinted film on the ocular end. Oh, and it comes with a hollow sight. And it is the um, it is these uh, types that have multiple reticles: a dot, a dot, a circle dot, crosshairs, and a uh, starburst type of reticle. And I'm, that's what the button batteries are for. There you go. Now, I've reviewed one of these before for another brand, but these are it's probably the most um, generic type of uh, holocytes available. And Take a look at this scope. I think there's anything else in there. In there. All right. What do we have here? We have a four by four to twelve by fifty uh, millimeter scope with uh, incorporated Picatinny rails around the main tube. You've got your windage and elevation adjustment small knobs that look like they could be potentially zero. You could. Maybe we zero them. I'll have to take a look at the, at the manual, whether or not you can. The, each click is a quarter MOA. Let's listen to them. Oh, actually, not too bad. And they are quite tactile. Not much slop. I, I am surprised. It's, the windage isn't bad either. Now, there doesn't appear to be any parallax adjustment. Let's see. This pretty stiff. It's got a little nub of a throw lever, and I suppose that is a locking, uh, a locking hex nut in there. Though I don't know why you'd want to tighten that down. I think it, it feels pretty smooth, and I don't... It's pretty stiff as it is. I don't think you'd need to lock this down per se. And uh, it is illuminated as it appears. All right, so we'll take a look at this uh, through the lens and see how well it tracks. All right, so this is um, the view from the scope. At 12 power, so it looks suspiciously like a nine power scope. Let me just zoom this out to its stated four power. And we're looking at the target at 50 yards downrange. And then back up to 12 power. To line this up with the top, with the dot on top there. And we're going to see, let's see if um, the point of of aim shifts with the zoom. So we're at 12 power now. I'm zoomed out on the digital zoom of the camera. So this is 12. All right, so we are at four power. I'm gonna zoom in with the digital. 
Yeah, it kept its point of aim. So 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2. And then three points, two. I'm actually turning the knob in the wrong direction, which is why it's turning away from its initial position. But I'll figure this out in a bit. With the reflex sight mounted directly behind your elevation turret, it makes it impossible to read your numbers. Now we end up about three clicks off, which isn't bad for a budget scope, and part of that could have been me because these knobs are really tiny. Surprisingly good for a budget scope. All right, we are going to see how well this thing actually shoots uh, and hold zero after firing the rounds through it. I fired through a few rounds of Federal Blue Box range pack to uh, get the scope zeroed in. Once dialed in, I took three shots on the top dot to get our baseline. Alright, I'm going to bang up this scope to simulate uh, some additional recoil because uh, obviously 22 doesn't have a lot of recoil, but we're going to see if it holds zero. Bang it up. Ammo can. Oops. Alright. And we're going to try a couple more rounds. All right, I'm gonna shoot at the bottom left dot and see if the rounds come close. Okay, while we're walking down range to see where those shots landed, I just wanted to invite you to check out my new Gadget and Gears channel, Moondog R&D. A channel focused on gadget reviews, photo and video gear, you know, geeky stuff. Because I like to test out and review other things, not just guns and ammo. But if you have enjoyed this review, please hit that like button and subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Hey, not bad. I mean, that could very well be the variant of this particular ammo, which doesn't shoot that well in uh, my 1022 so i'll say it holds zero because uh all if you triangulate all three shots we are um at or near the dot certainly as good as the previous set of three shots on the top dot so it looks like it'll hold zero let's take a look at some of its other features it has this generic combination duplex mill dot reticle that you really only find in Chinese branded scopes nowadays. Back in the day, I think it was in the 70s, I remember seeing these marketed as a range finding scope for deer hunters. It may be a tad busy, but it's perfectly usable for target shooting at 50 yards. And it's illuminated in both red and green. Now I'm going to put my hand in front of the scope just so you can see the illumination, because obviously it's intended for very low light conditions. So we'll again go green, one, as you can see, the green's a bit too intense, and even the red is a little bit bright for twilight shooting. It would have been nicer if they had a few more low power settings. Ooh, look at that light bleed on the tube. Next, let's take an objective look at sharpness, resolution, and image quality. There's actually pretty good sharpness from center to edge. There really isn't that much softening along the edge of the image, uh, just a little bit. And I owe this to the fact that uh, this is only a 12 power scope, so they haven't over magnified, overpowered uh, the inherent optics of this. Whereas in their 16 and 24 power, you're just magnifying all the defects in the glass. This is further evidenced by the fact that there's very little purple fringing, very little chromatic aberration, even along the white target frame or even around the, the white of the number eight uh, decal at the top. Um, whereas if you had an over-magnified scope, you'd see a lot of chromatic aberration. 
Next, let's take a look at the beige target clipped to the bottom of the target frame near the center crosshairs. That is a 4 inch shoot and see bullseye and we can clearly see the 22 caliber holes on it. But the scope lacks the resolution and contrast to make out two additional holes on the paper. Now this would be totally understandable and forgivable at 100 yards, but at 50 yards, mmm, disappointing. Looking at the US Air Force's optical resolution chart clipped to the right of the target, uh, I can make out, I can resolve vertical and horizontal lines in element 6 of group negative 2. This is about as good as the Roxant 50mm spotting scope that I reviewed recently, and if you haven't seen that review, I'll include a link in the video description. Now, surprisingly, that isn't terrible. It's only about two elements less sharp than a Vortex Diamondback Tactical that I reviewed recently. Yeah, uh, I'll include a link to that review as well. But that Diamondback is about five times more expensive than this Pinty and doesn't come with these um, accessories. Let's briefly look at the reflex side. I didn't do a live fire test on this because it would effectively double the length of this video. Uh, but this reflex side is pretty good. It's pretty, well, it's par for the course. Uh, I've reviewed a similar uh, reflex site from CV Life and I'll include a link to that particular review. It's pretty easy to co-witness this to the rifle scope and in theory you would use this to transition to shorter range targets. Uh, but it is very vulnerable to, uh, to damage from getting banged up because of that uh, very exposed uh, mirror lens. The site offers a number of reticle options as well as the choice between red or green illumination. This is the laser designator. It has its own set of windage and elevation adjustment turrets and you can adjust it just like the scope. And as it turns out, it was pretty close to co-witnessing straight out of the box. And while somebody obviously thought this was tactical, I seriously question the practical application of putting a laser designator and a full-size reflex sight atop a 12-power rifle scope. It makes just about any rifle you put it on awkwardly top-heavy. There is no way I would consider this a tactical advantage. Having a backup laser to my backup red dot isn't necessarily a bad idea, but I would put my laser somewhere else on my rifle and I would choose a micro red dot as opposed to a full-size reflex sight. Now, on the plus side, this scope isn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. I know that's a backhanded compliment, but it's the truth. Considering the price of a laser illuminator and a hollow sight and buying a 12 power scope, this actually may be a good value. Um, it's just that I wouldn't necessarily combine them all together. I'm not a Pinty fanboy, in fact I have a past review of a Pinty Red Dot that failed, and I can't speak to the 16 and 24 power version of the scope which have been reviewed by other PewTubers as being complete crap, but maybe this has the advantage of low expectations because I found this 12 power scope to be not half bad for 80 bucks. If you're interested in finding out where you can get these scopes, I'll include more information on my blog, MoondogIndustries.com. And if you enjoyed and got something out of watching this review, please hit that like button and consider subscribing to the channel. And if you didn't like this review, then hit the thumbs down button. But either way, let me know in the comments what you thought. Thanks again for watching. You be safe out there. Moondog, out. Hey, if you like this video, please share it on social media. You know, Facebook, forums, MeWe, whatever platform you're on. And if you want to see more videos, check out MoondogIndustries.com. Oh,